Funding for the production of Folks is made possible in part by a grant from Union National Life Insurance, serving Louisiana and the South since 1926, a family-managed corporation providing whole life insurance. Straight ahead on Folks, we'll meet businesswoman Barbara Lamont, president of Crescent City Communications in New Orleans, a company that is on the cutting edge of telecommunications technology. We'll visit the NASA Southern University Industrial Applications Center in Baton Rouge, helping the business and industrial community in research and information. We also bring you a sampling of some fabulous music from world-class blues musician Kenny Neal, taped recently at the Festival International de Louisiane in Lafayette. All of this and more on today's edition of Folks. Hello everyone and welcome to Folks. I'm Sonia Massengale. As we move into the 21st century, some astounding changes are taking place in the way we receive and disseminate information. It was almost 20 years ago that man first walked on the moon, and we witnessed it through live satellite transmission in our very own living rooms on the television. It seemed like a miracle. Today we take live broadcasts for granted from all over the globe. Twenty years ago, gathering research information of a business or technical nature required hours of diligent research for most people. Today, the same information can be retrieved in minutes through the marvel of computers linked by telephone lines. To those of us who remember the slow old days, these are the days of miracles. Where do minorities fit into this changing world of technology? Well, the subject of today's lead story would probably say anywhere they want to. For Barbara Lamont, president of Crescent City Communications in New Orleans, parent company for a television station and a teleport, anything that can be conceived can with perseverance be achieved. But despite U.S. sanctions, Poland does intend to honor its $9 to $12 billion debt to Western banks, remaining what he called an honest trading partner. Barbara Lamont, CBS News, New York. Barbara Lamont has over 30 years' experience in broadcasting. She has been a foreign correspondent, a reporter for CBS in New York and Washington, and WNEW, and anchor of a weekly black news program. She ran the Nigerian television network for two years, all of this at a time when women were just beginning to make a mark in the broadcasting arena. Now she is venturing into another phase of broadcasting where women are scarce. Lamont is owner and chief executive officer of Crescent City Communications, parent company of soon to be on the air, WCCL TV 49 in New Orleans. The decision to continue in communications, it's what I like, it's what I love, and it's just the tip of a baby industry that's going to grow over the next 20 or 30 years by leaps and bounds. I think you're going to see a small TV set, a standard issue in every car, the way you have a cassette player right now. And uh, it's an exciting industry, and I got into it what I consider mid-career broadcast journalism. and. Um, decided there was nothing else I wanted to do. Then the dilemma of where do I go from here because I've been a producer, I've been a writer, I've been a disc jockey, I've been a, uh, an editor. Well, what do you do next? And the answer to many of my colleagues is management. Now the problem is that when you work for a network like CBS or ABC and your talent, you make an enormous salary and you, get, you take more than 100% cut in salary to become management. So the question is, do you bite the bullet? Do you take the risk and go for ownership? Acquiring an FCC license was difficult for Lamont. The process took three years in all. I want to say it's the hardest thing I ever did. Enormous stress. I didn't have gray hair before that. <laughs> Enormous stress. It's, it's litigation, full-time lawsuit, like criminal trial, before an FCC law court in Washington. Uh, Ours was three years, just about to the day, from 1984 to 1987. And how did you come to choose New Orleans? It's where the frequency came up. 
they released new frequencies in 1984, two of them. One was in Tampa, Florida, and one was in New Orleans. Um, Tampa, this was at just at the beginning of the oil recession. Tampa was a city that was well on the way to growth, and I knew that we wouldn't be building until probably 1988. In some cases, a case like that takes five or seven years. And I thought that Tampa would already have peaked, and New Orleans is the only Sun Belt city that, that really hasn't happened yet economically, and I'm very exciting time to be here. Although she is not a Louisiana native, Vermont has a commitment to the New Orleans community. Here she addresses members of the Louisiana Black Media Coalition about success in broadcasting. Stamina, Jim talked about. I know a lot about stamina. And I'm trying to figure out, aside from, from my mother, I got stamina, from all the things we go through as a people in this country, I got stamina. It helps, by the way, one of the things I did when my kids were young was to send them out of the country every summer, get a completely different sense of themselves as black people. We are not a minority people in the world. We are a majority people. And it's very important that we understand who we are and what we're about if we're going to be strong people. One more word about stamina. It's going to get you in the end. I understand why people go to drugs and alcohol. There are alternatives disgusting alternatives, like jogging, <laughs> yeah. like meditating. You know, there are things you can do to avoid drugs and alcohol, and you should be starting that now. <laughs> Stamina is a, is a terrible thing, and it's with you every day. The battle for consistency, the battle to be strong, because you're going to get munched by your bankers, by your lawyers, by some of your colleagues, by the competition, by the advertising industry. And you're you can't take it personally. You can't say, oh, what, it, what am I doing wrong? That's life. Because television is such a competitive business and programming costs are high, profits are slow to realize. To offset the slow flow of profits, Lamont is building NoTel, the first teleport in New Orleans, which will be in operation by this summer. However, construction of the teleport has been difficult for Lamont, as it cost her more than money. That's a bit of a tragedy. Um, I came down to build a television station. They changed the tax law. And instead of saying that the entire Congress of the United States conspired against me, I pulled in my breath and dumped all my venture capital contacts and went looking for a different kind of financing. It was very, very difficult. And I decided that one of the things that would help me along is I needed a hard revenue producing asset property, perhaps even before the television station, to kind of give the company a boost. And I had a chief engineer, director of engineering, whose name was Bob Nunez from New Orleans, who said, let's build a teleport. And I knew from working at the networks how difficult it is to get out of here on satellite. The saints have to use telephone lines to go to Baton Rouge in order to uplink out of the Superdome. And it's an expensive venture. It's a troublesome venture. And it's such a new industry that you have trouble getting staff, that you have trouble getting people who've ever worked in it before. But he was one of the top engineers in this country. He'd been chief engineer at several stations in this city, and he knew his satellite technology. He was ham radio and computer nut. And he convinced me. And uh, I had all my money was in the television station. So I went to my husband, and we slapped another mortgage on the house. And we went into the teleport venture, and we looked for partners, and we talked to several other teleports, and finally um, had a joint venture and put it up. Um, unfortunately, I say a tragedy because Bob, at 45 years old, healthy as a horse, died of a heart attack on December 8th in the middle of everything. And I uh, did not have a good Christmas. And three days after he died, someone came off the highway at 100 miles an hour and slammed into my car with me in it and removed the left side of my car surgically. <laughs> so it was a rough time. What's gotten you through? What's gotten you through the rough times? Well, I replaced him with six engineers. <laughs> That's the team you see here. Uh, brought some guys in from Florida to continue building. Um, I don't know. I guess you're asking about spiritually or my soul. I, there, there are no easy, easy answers for that. What's gotten me through is Winston Churchill's philosophy. Yeah, I, I'm prepared to go to peanut butter tomorrow. And what's the worst that can happen? I'll live on macaroni. Either I live well or I live simply. I'm not into fur coats or, you know, fancy restaurants. <laughs> Do you have a guiding philosophy for your personal life 
that carries over into your professional life? I do. It's not mine. Um, like Joe Biden, <laughs> I've plagiarized it. I'll tell you a little story. Uh, in 1944, just before the end of World War II, Winston Churchill was asked to address the um, graduating class of Oxford University. And he prepared this 30-page speech, and the valedictorian of the class stood up and said, Mr. Prime Minister, and I'm sure in addressing us, you'll tell us the secret of your fortitude and your strength and your stamina in repelling the Nazi hordes of bombers. And this was when the, the Nazis were just starting to send un unmanned missiles across. To, and London was indeed being bombed every night. And Churchill stood up and tore up his speech. And he said to the graduating class at Oxford in 1944, don't give up, don't give up, don't give up, don't give up, and walked off the stage. <laughs> and I have a, a very large bronze statue of Winston Churchill that sits right next to my breakfast table every morning and talks to me. <laughs> Courageous is just one word that describes Barbara Lamont, inspiring others to endure when times seem hard. Perhaps she has endured because of her personal goal of survival. My only goal is to live to be 130 or 140. And I'm working now for these 10 years. Uh, I'm almost 50 years old. I'm going to work till I'm 60. And these 10 years are going to allow me to live simply, reasonably, but comfortably. So when I'm 125, I want to have a party at Commander's Palace. I can hire a driver to take me there. <laughs> and that's what I'm working for. Lamont's television station, WCCL Channel 49, is also expected to go on the air sometime this summer. Now let's take a look at a new and powerful source of information for business and industry in Louisiana. The National Aeronautics and Space Administration has formed an alliance with Southern University in Baton Rouge to form an industrial application center. Through this center, any business or industry can have access to just about any information through a technical information research team which has access to over 500 computerized databases worldwide. The NASA SU Industrial Application Center is located in this modest building on the Baton Rouge campus of Southern University. It is a young organization that has been operational for little over a year. Dr. Leroy Rockmore, professor and chairman of Southern's Computer Science Department, is one of the forces behind the realization of the NASA SU IAC. The purpose of these uh, IACs, it's called, they're called, Industrial Application Centers, is to transfer technology information to, to, to business and industry. Now this information uh, uh, spans a spectrum uh, of areas from science to engineering, uh, uh, research in these areas, marketing, uh, uh, marketing research, uh, on and on and on. And uh, so, th as I said, this is NASA's way of carrying out the responsibility given to that agency by Congress. The purpose of the Industrial Application Center is to combine technology and people. The Technical Information Research Team has access to over 500 computerized databases worldwide. Therefore, they can assist just about any business or technical entity in acquiring information on any subject. Students are employed as research assistants. What can a student expect to gain from interaction with SU NASA IAC? Uh, we do indeed have uh, student research assistants on board with the project. Uh, uh, we're budgeted for that. And it is a tremendous learning, uh, it provides tremendous learning experiences for our students as well as for our faculty. The business community is benefiting from this program. Southern University and its students are certainly benefiting. What does NASA get out of their relationship with the center? Okay, NASA uh, fulfills its mission as given to it by the U.S. Congress. That is to say, it indeed uh, uh, accomplishes the feat of, of, of spreading technology information to the, to the taxpayers. Basically, there are two areas that we can provide a service. One is to almost anybody who's interested in doing something new in their business area, whether it's taking a new product and developing that, or even looking for new clients, or relocating, or locating a second or a third or fourth retail center. They can come to us. We have access to over 500 different 
commercial databases, plus quite a few government databases. Dr. John Hubble is director of the NASA SUIAC and a member of the graduate school faculty. Here he outlines some of the uses for the center. The second aspect is development of something new. If a company has an idea and they're ready to make a prototype, but they don't have all the knowledge and all the expertise and the resources to do it, we put them in contact with the appropriate NASA field center that has a similar interest. And together, they can, if their interests match, say, well, we'll put our NASA engineers to work in this area because they have maybe expertise in this area and come up with a finished product that the customer can patent. Axon is the oldest, and uh, it's been around about, twin, uh, about 12 years. Uh, we have, in my opinion, successfully done business with uh, large and small companies alike. Uh, we are, uh, our expertise uh, is interior build, building maintenance. Uh, we, we have the, the expertise in the man, manpower and equipment to service uh, large and small buildings alike. Uh, both industrial, commercial, and institutional. Henry Clark is the director of sales for Accent Maintenance and T&E Janitorial Supply, a combined business enterprise that has utilized the Industrial Applications Center. I was looking for um, a most cost-effective way to increase sales for both T&E and Accent. Um, I guess we, we kind of met by coincident. Uh, Mr. Stewart and I attended a meeting where he introduced me to his programs and the things that they did. Uh, but we just, we talked a little bit. Uh, I told him some of the things that I was interested in. And one of those things was to search the commerce business daily um, on an ongoing basis. Um, to do that, it re re would require physically a lot of time on my part. Uh, I could have him do it uh, at, uh, and save myself a lot of money uh, and time and they could uh, routinely give me information from that system. NASA SUIAC is strongly committed to minority and disadvantaged businesses. Although they do charge a fee for their services, the fees are much lower than a business owner would expect to pay a private research information firm. This project is part of NASA's community service. Why is there a fee attached to the services? Well, part of it is if you get something and pay nothing for it, it doesn't get used with its true value. The other thing, this is a service that is supposed to be more or less self-generating or a service that produces self-generating funds. So that if we provide service for 100 clients, maybe our overhead's paid for by NASA. But if we provide service for 2,000 clients, then our budget doesn't cover that. It is, in my opinion, one of the most cost-effective ways to search the commerce business daily. Uh, it has certainly been proven, uh, that's been proven through us. For more information about the services of NASA SUIAC, call 504-771-NASA. If you are a minority business owner or just interested in trends in minority business, the next feature is for you. Next weekend at Southern University in Baton Rouge, there will be the second annual Minority Business and Trade Show. We were there last year, and here's just a sample of what you'll find. The Minority Business and Trade Show is being held to promote education, research, and development in the black community. Through providing space at a nominal fee, the Business and Trade Show brings an opportunity for minority vendors to expose their goods and services to the black community. Did, were you aware that there were this many black businesses in the area? I was certainly not aware. In fact, the last meeting I found out that there were people almost in every kind of business imaginable, in particular some that I didn't think of. And I think it's quite good to see black persons being involved in businesses and other black people finding out about those businesses. It's not isolating yourself from the total economic community, but it is supporting minority business, which is quite important. 
I think that our business is catering to minorities, but I think as a business person, we have to take into consideration that money is green, it has no color backing, and I think minority businesses are going to have to branch off into other areas, and that's what we're doing. The variety of minority businesses represented is staggering. There are clothing stores, veterinarians, florists, janitorial suppliers, and financial consultants, to name a few. And if that isn't enough, there are samples of the vendor's products, such as frozen yogurt and seafood seasoned with Belmistica seasoning. You're likely to find just about anything displayed. Thurman Mortuary displayed coffins in a variety of styles and costs. What kind of reaction have you been getting from, from the coffin display, and whose idea was this? Okay, you know, uh, when uh, we decided back in May that uh, we would do this, uh, uh, the question was actually, you know, what would y'all put on display? And I'd say, what type of business we're in? You know, we're in the funeral business. I don't think we can display it's uh, uh, a casket. And a lot of people are surprised that uh, uh, we are here, and uh, uh, Representative Jewel Newman said he's been to quite a few uh, minority expos, and that this is the first time a funeral home has ever participated. And so, you know, we're business like everybody else, and we are promoting our before need funeral plan, and right now we feel that people need to plan uh, for that ultimate tomorrow. The Minority Business Trade Show will take place this year on Saturday, April 30th at the Clark Activity Center on the campus of Southern University in Baton Rouge from 10 to 6 p.m. Admission is free. There will be door prizes, activities for the children, and more than 100 exhibits. Our final feature brings to you a taste of some of the wonderful music you'll be experiencing on folks in the months to come. Kenny Neal is a young Louisiana blues musician who has become a world-class attraction. To close the show, here's a part of his performance taped at the Festival International de Louisiane in Lafayette recently.
57. I was born in a city called New Orleans. I was raised up in Baton Rouge. I tell you, it sure did me a lot of good. Because one, number one, I was just surrounded by the blue. Now, when I was a little bit of boy, my daddy used to set me on his knees. You reach in his back pocket, pull out his harmonica. He'll play the blues for me, y'all. And I was just sitting there sucking it all in. And I tell you, I was just surrounded by the blues, y'all. I'm going to tell you something else. Well, you see, my mama, she told me, she said, Kenny, go to school, son. Learn your book. Don't grow up and be nobody's fool. Boy, I tell you, I sure wish I would have listened to my mama. Because I've been a fool, y'all. And that wasn't good enough, you know, that wasn't good enough. I got to tell y'all a little bit of flow about myself. Y'all know what I did? Y'all know what I did? As soon as I got a little hair in my face, I thought I was a man. Couldn't tell me I wasn't a man. And that wasn't good enough. You know what I had to do? I had to go get me a wife. Oh, I sure wish I would have listened to my mama. Because I've been a fool. So I tell you what. Right about now, I'd like to reminisce a little bit. And I'll show you what my daddy used to play for me a long time ago when I was a little bit more. Y'all ready? Are y'all ready? Later on this season, we'll have more music and interviews with Kenny Neal and other world-class performers at the International Festival. We hope you'll join us. See you next week on another edition of Folks. Bye-bye. He used to do it something like this. Now, I'm going way back. I'm going way back. Right back. Funding for the production of Folks is made possible in part by a grant from Union National Life Insurance, serving Louisiana and the South since 1926, a family-managed corporation providing whole life insurance.